back to another episode of my weekly vlog series TIA. Um, for those of you who are watching for the first time, I'm Ada. Hello. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Meghan Markle's father, Nigerian fathers and fathers generally. And my goodness, what an eventful week it's been. My God, it's been so full of happiness joy i bet you all know why it's the royal wedding harry and megan my gosh it's it's been awesome everyone has just been wishing them so much love so much happiness so much romance so much goodwill the whole of the united kingdom watched that wedding i bet you watched it too oh my god i feel like megan our own megan she feels like the girl next door i feel like she's my sister well, not really, she's not my sister, but you know what I mean, you know? I feel like, you know, she's just ordinary. That could have been you, that could have been me, yes. But except our destinies are not really written like that. Which brings me into today's vlog. Your destiny, your experiences, fathers, daughters, parental relationship, all the works. If you'd seen my last video from last week where I talked about baby mamas, and Nigerian men having children from different, you know, women. This is, it, it throws a bit of light at what I was trying to say last week. You see, Megan, you know, was raised by her mother at the end of the day because the mom broke away, you know, had a divorce from the dad and she had to raise Megan. But that's not a problem. Megan had a good relationship with her father. That's paramount. And that relationship transcended beyond just her being Megan, the relationship she had with her father and her mother helped her to become that whole person we see today. You see, it's very important that children have solid relationships with their parents, their biological parents. And I'm saying this today because I'm taking away lessons from the royal wedding, the royal couple, Harry and Meghan, their whirlwind fairy tale, their whole love story. We're all admiring them. We're all saying, oh my God, that could have been anyone, you know? But the truth of the matter is, each of them played their roles well. Their parents, Meghan's parents, you know, Prince Harry's parents, they all had to chip in in raising those kids to be who they are today. Let's go into Meghan. Meghan's father, which is my topic for today. Meghan's father. Fathers, you have a vital role to play. The relationship between daughters and fathers are inexplicable. The bond is very tight. I know because growing up as a kid, I was very close to my father. I was my father's the apple of my father's eyes literally i'm a, i mean i'm sorry to say this my, my siblings are watching this but i'm not trying to you know diss anyone but that was the truth anyone who knew me from childhood would know that i was quite close to my father but you know i had a mother as well you know so my mother and my father were married you know but that's not even the issue here the issue here is fathers you play a vital role if you decide not to stay with the mother of your children and you move on to somebody else, please endeavor to carry on playing your role. You know, Megan's dad not being there. We've been told it's medical, he has surgery and all that. Of course, we know there are more, there's probably more, there may be more to that story and there may not be, but if at all there was, we don't know what angle, we don't know, we don't know what would have happened, the main reason why he chose to schedule his surgery in that period where his daughter is going to be getting married. My goodness, your child only gets married once in their lifetime, well, to a royal, that is, because Meghan is not going to marry a royal again. So it was a very important you know, occasion for her and the dad didn't show up. Ab above all, there's a lesson here. Meghan would have to forgive her father. And I know that daughters love their dads, you know, immeasurably. No matter how bad the mother says the man is, no matter what picture the mothers try to create about their fathers, daughters would always, always love their fathers. They say fathers and daughters, mothers and sons. And the Brits always say, the British people will say to you, a daughter is your daughter for life. A son is your son until he gets a wife. I don't know how true that is, but as you've seen it, Megan still, you know, asked for her dad to give her away, even though he declined. And this is, you know, irrespective of the fact that, you know, the dad was separated from the mom at the age of six. 
you know and so i just want nigerian men nigerian men african men who who are listening or watching my vlog i need you to understand that no matter how terrible your baby mamas the woman who's had your kids may be no matter what kind of you know relationship you have with her or you've had with her no matter how much you can't bear to see her or be around no matter the irreconcilable differences i want to use this medium to urge you to remember that whatever you do whatever decision you take is not for the woman it's for the children the children are all that matters you need to stay with your children you need to keep in touch with your children you need to do good do right by your children megan's dad did right by megan he sent her to a private school. He nurtured her all the early stages of her life. We saw her baby pictures with her father. She had a wonderful, you know, childhood. So fathers, Nigerian dads, who were staying away from their children because the mother's a nasty piece of work or because the mother's are not cooperative or whatever your reasons are, the fact remains, do not do those children a disservice. Those children between you and that woman is all that matters. You must try your utmost best. You have to keep going at it. I know women can be very difficult. I know some women are indeed very difficult, but you must try and look past the woman and make sure that you are in that child's life in whatever capacity you possibly can. And as for the women, Nigerian women, I hate to say this, but it, it appears that the stories I hear, experiences I've gathered over the years, women are each other's worst, you know, enemies. We are our own worst enemies. We're always about spiting each other, showing each other off, scoring brownie points. We want to show that, oh, guess what? I got him. He left you. He came to me. Well done. He chose you. He came to you. That's fine. If that is all you live for, that is amazing i'm happy for that achievement but let's look beyond your achievement the most important thing is not just that you've got the man enable that man to do the right thing and where the man has children with somebody else it is in your own interest to ensure that he reaches out to those kids you know the children have no part to play in whatever situation children are innocent it is vital that you encourage your men who have children with other women to look out for their children to be in their children's lives you need to trust your man to be able to do that if you don't trust your man and you think he's going to go back to the woman because he's reaching out to his kids then that's a different issue that is a different issue women that's an issue of trust and that is down to you and your man to sort out i'll deal with that in probably another video but in this vlog series i want to encourage african nigerian men african men men generally reach out to your children you never know what that child's destiny beholds you never know what path that child's life will take you never know where that child's life will lead him or her look at president barack obama he was raised by his grandparents his father went back to kenya left his mother he never knew he was going to be the president of the United States of America, but he did. And I mean, where was the father? You know, how can he claim ownership to the success? How can he claim part of, to be part of that story, part of that success? You know, there's so many stories, so many examples of absent fathers, fathers not, you know, upping their games, father not doing what they're supposed to be doing in children's lives. I know that, you know, I can go on and on about so many examples about fathers, but the onus most importantly remains on the women. Women, us women, we need to try within our powers to know what is right, do what is right by children. Whether children involved, you need to sit back and have a second thought. Wherever the children involved, you need to act very decisively and very carefully. Women 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 rule the world women rule the world we know we rule the world we know that a lot of our behaviors can impact things in a very big way there are women who would use their children as bargaining chips there are women who will use their children as a as a tool for spite i just want to appeal to you through this video life is short life is sweet that child did not ask to be born that child 
came because both of you came together to bring that child into this world and you owe that child women the onus is on us if you're married to a man or you're with a man who has children by somebody else you must endeavor that that man reaches out to those children i mean what sort of what does that make him what sort of a man are you hanging out with if he's got children from somebody else and he's not taking care of them? What does that make you? You the woman who's supporting a man not to care for his children, his other children. What does that make you? I mean, in all this royal fairy tale, royal romance, the lessons there are clear. The lesson and the history of a single mother who raised Megan after she divorced from the husband. The lesson of an absent father and the roles he could have played and the lesson of forgiveness we must learn to forgive each other one another things happen in life things will continue to happen in life but we must learn to forgive because Megan will forgive her father her father will remain her father Doria the mother raised her she made sacrifices as a single mother as an unmarried parent I'm an unmarried parent I'm a single parent and I know the kind of sacrifices I make daily, every day I exist, every day I breathe. I know the struggles, I know the sacrifices I need to make for my children and I want to use this vlog today to encourage women. Any woman out there watching my video, you need to do a soul search. Are you happy where you are? Megan, for example, took a step. She had a divorce. She's a divorcee. You know, Megan left a marriage. Imagine if she'd not leave that marriage. Imagine if that marriage never broke up. She probably would have been there and not fulfilled this part of her life. Guys, don't get me wrong. I'm a believer in marriage. Marriage is an institute. It's a sacred institute. I believe in marriage. I come from parents that were married. I'm not asking you to walk away from your marriages. I'm not asking you not to try to fix your marriages. But all I'm just saying to you today, through my vlog is, the truth be told, have a soul search. Do a soul search. Speak to yourself. Admit your flaws. Admit the absent elements in your relationship, in your life. Figure out how to make it work. Figure out how to enjoy the life you were given. I'm going to leave my message here today. I want you guys to leave your comments below i want you to subscribe to follow my page on youtube on instagram on facebook i will always be there to respond to your questions guys my video is not a monologue i want it to be interactive i need you guys to leave a message i need you guys to say something i get emails private emails i get messages on whatsapp i get text messages guys just leave your comments below and follow me, follow me, subscribe, subscribe until I come your way next week.